let's start with Richard Branson. That's exciting. So Richard Branson um, uh, launched himself into space today. Uh, first, uh, uh, kind of first civilian, if you will, uh, to go into into space uh, on a, um, I guess it was a kind of a plane, uh, went up and, and, and landed. Incredibly cool. Completely uh, privately funded. Uh, they launched off of uh, from New New Mexico in the United States, and there we go. Florida Nick is starting us off with two dollars. We could make this a two dollar day, and and we could just get all of you to just do two dollars and two dollars and see how how much money we can raise at two dollars uh, a pop. So uh, keep it up, Nick. Uh, thank you, Florida Nick. So uh, here we are. We've got a, a first man in space, billionaire. In space, in eight days or in seven days, I think Jeff Bezos is going up into space on uh, Blue Origin. And what's interesting there is there's there's some really healthy competition between Blue Origin and, and uh, Virgin Galactica, I guess it's called. And uh, uh, so far, right, it, we've seen the Virgin has won because uh, because Branson got into space first. But it's interesting because. Blue Origin announced that Jeff Bezos would be launching in seven days. And uh, uh, Virgin was supposed to launch just a test flight with some pilots uh, today. But Richard Branson jumped in, basically uh, announcing that he wouldn't let Jeff Bezos be the first man into space. He wanted to be the first one into space. So some healthy competition there. And therefore, he joined the flight today and went into space. And uh, now there's competition about what you define as space. It turns out that uh, Branson went something like 84 kilometers uh, up um, and uh, the United States defines the beginning of space at something like 84 kilometers. But the international body, some international body that regulates this stuff, defines going up into space as 100 kilometers. Jeff Bezos is going to go with the 100 kilometers. So, so the whole week, um, uh, Blue Origin has been poo-pooing uh, the achievement of uh, Richard Branson by saying he's not really going to space. It doesn't really count. Zero gravity is much, uh, much low. That, you know, it's going to be a much shorter uh, time in zero gravity. And it's not really a rocket. It's an airplane. And it, so there's this, there's this competition going on uh, between the two uh, from a marketing perspective, from a technology perspective, from a timing perspective. Um, it, you know, and I... I find it cool to see. I think the idea of uh, private individuals uh, making it into space at their own expense uh, is uh, is truly uh, is truly thrilling and exciting, and proves that even big capital ventures, even big ventures that take a lot of money, can be done by private enterprise. That you don't need government to initiate every advancement. You don't need government research, government money, government funding to move humanity forward. It's, it's actually pretty rare and pretty unusual that government is funding uh, things that actually all the way push us forward. They might fund some of the basic research because they're the only funders today of basic research. They've crowded out everybody else. But in terms of taking that basic research and turning it into something that is useful for human life, it's not what government does. Uh, and uh, and it's not what government is capable of. And even if and if the government stepped out of basic research, it's not like there'd be a hole there. And I think what Branson and Bezos are doing is showing us that private enterprise, private ambitions, private selfish, self-interested interests can move civilization forward. And and space is is a is the next frontier. It's 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 a, it's phenomenal to see us breaking into space and, and, and what human beings can achieve and what is possible. I think every time, uh, every time uh, these guys launch rockets into space and ultimately make that trip to Mars and, and put humans on Mars, these are massive achievements uh, for human beings, for the future, for the advancement of technology, for the advancement of human ability. And, uh, and it truly is fantastic. And it's a slap in the face to the statists who, again, think that only with government can we achieve anything. Uh, Victor Barati, thank you. He's continuing in the $2 day. Christopher is going up to the 550 Canadian, which is what, four bucks or four something US. So thanking Christopher uh, for your support. Uh, I really appreciate support at whatever level you guys 
choose to support it. I appreciate it, whether it's two dollars, two pounds, five, five, five fifty Canadian, whatever, um, is uh, is really um, is really great. So Branson is the first billionaire. Well, he's the first uh, civilian in uh, to to fly into space in a civilian in a privately funded civilian a aircraft, and that is uh, that is truly um, fantastic. The beginning of space tourism, the beginning, and and look, people are going to complain. Oh, only billionaires can do this. Only billionaires can. Yes, that's right. But what's the point from from the perspective of the people? The point is that billionaires are first adapters of very very expensive technology. But what happens? Over time, because billionaires are willing to spend hundreds of millions of dollars doing this, because Branson has been willing to spend a trillion dollars in developing this technology, that technology is going to get cheaper. The more billionaires and the more gazillionaires or whatever, whatever the level of wealth they have. Sorry, Branson has spelled, spent a billion dollars, not a trillion dollars. He's not a trillionaire. A billion dollars to develop this technology. But the more they're willing to spend their own wealth, the more people are willing to pay Blue Origin and, and Virgin, to take them into space, the more capital these companies have to develop this technology, to expand this technology, to make it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Uh, one day, it won't cost $100 million to go into space. It'll cost $100,000 to go into space, and a lot more people will be able to afford it. And as that becomes more prevalent and more people are willing to pay 100000 to go into space, the price will drop even further to 10000 And ultimately it will become affordable for many of us to go into space. And it, this is how advanced technology develops. This is how, uh, you know, the first laser printers were fabulously expensive. Only corporations could afford them. And as corporations were the first adopters and bought a bunch of them, providing capital, providing incentive to laser printing companies to develop the laser printer, the price of laser printing dropped dramatically. Same happened with computers. The same, you know, remember the supercomputer? Remember, remember mainframes, remember the mini computers that digital had? Only big corporations could afford that. But as they developed that, the technology developed, the incentives were created until we got uh, the PC, until we got personal computers. So all of this allows for a dramatic decline in costs and brings that technology to all of us. Uh, so this is, it's great news. It's, it's a great moment. I think uh, for private space travel, for innovation, for private enterprise into other planets, and I'm excited by it. It's it's another step towards the ultimate colonization of Mars, and it would be phenomenal if the colonization of Mars happens by private entrepreneurs rather than by governments planting flags. But it's by by entrepreneurs figuring out how to make money colonizing Mars, how to make money how to create wealth, how to create value by colonizing Mars. That is the goal. That is the, 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 the uh, achievement. And of course, by wealth creating, by mining, by, by expanding the human scope of what is possible. I don't know what it's going to look like. And I don't know what kind of values are going to be produced. And I don't know what kind of wealth is going to produce. But this is great. And this is um, part of the, the beauty of what's happening is that you know, people are complaining about billionaires paying not, not paying enough taxes. Good, because it allows them to keep the wealth so that they can invest in these kind of companies. Government would, would swander this money, would waste this money, would throw it down, you know, flush it down the toilet onto infrastructure projects of roads to nowhere, bridges to nowhere. You know, wait and see what this infrastructure build is actually got inside of it. All the pork, all the goodies, all the little favors to different districts and different senators and different house members to basically bribe them into voting for it. Don't, please, federal government, don't invest in infrastructure and let private entrepreneurs invest in infrastructure and look what happens. We might go to Mars. So I celebrate the fact that uh, Elon Musk and and, uh, and who's been in the news, Peter Thiel and uh, Jeff Bezos and uh, Richard Branson are not paying their, quote, fair share of taxes. They're paying as little taxes as possible. They're keeping the wealth and using that wealth to advance civilization, using that wealth to move us forward. And yes, there are poor people in the world, but you know what? I'd rather see 
branches wealth going to creating jobs, going to moving civilization forward, going to new technologies, new achievements, new value creations, they will ultimately create jobs and lower poverty, ultimately. But in the short run, yeah, the left is going to, the left and the right, I think, are going to complain bitterly about, oh, what's the point? We're going to Mars when there's so many problems over here at Earth. We should be confiscating all their wealth and redistributing it. Who the hell are you to decide how an individual should use his wealth, what his value should be? I love it that these guys, all these rich guys, are so ambitious when it comes to uh, space travel. Ambitious when it comes to how to use their wealth and it's moving civilization forward, whether it's your particular values or not. <laughs> That's the beauty of a free market. It doesn't have to be yours. It's not democratic. It's not what the majority wants. Mars looks a lot like Utah, MH08 says. Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll discover life uh, on Mars cons cons constitutes... Maybe Mars is the planet Mormons go to when they die. And that's why it looks like Utah. For God's chosen people to choose Utah as the place to live in, particularly the flats and the desert in Utah. Right? Um, so I'm excited about Branson going to space. Uh, a week from now, we'll see Jeff Bezos going to space. So here's the question. Here's the question. How is this, how is, how, how are we going to keep this space travel safe? How are we going to make sure that these spaceships don't blow up? Well, one way to keep it safe, one way to keep it safe is to have the, the guy who's spending all the billions building these space rockets fly like the first one. Like, they don't want to die. So you know that Branson and Bezos have put enough safety protocols into their spaceships to make sure that they don't get killed on their initial flights, right? So they have a very selfish incentive to make these spaceships, to make these planes, to make these rockets safe. All right, so that's one way reason why they make it safe what are some other reasons why as we develop this as we develop this technology launch people into space and look they're probably going to be accidents one in x number of these rocket spaceships will cause some deaths we've seen this in the past we've seen this with nasa we saw it with the space shuttle we saw so it with the Apollo program. There is no such thing as zero accidents. There's no such thing as 100% safety. And this is the transition into the topic of safety, right? So there are always going to be accidents. And when they have accidents on these spacecraft, what are we going to do? We're going to regulate it. This government is going to step in and try to choke this and try to regulate it. And my view is that'll slow down that will reduce our ability to go to space. The beauty right now is there's very little regulation. These individuals are taking risks. They know the risk that they're taking. They're calibrating the risk return trade-off for themselves based on their own personal values rather than some bureaucrats. And by doing that, they're advancing technology further. They're moving the world further ahead. I mean, it's amazing to me that it's okay for the government to calibrate safety, like in Apollo, because it's for the common good. So if a few people die for the common good, that's okay. We realize you have to take some risks for the common good with public money. We can't have a 100% safety record when we do Apollo, but we got to get to the moon because JFK said we got to get to the moon and JFK was speaking for the common good of the American people. So it's okay if a few people die for the common good. But when it's individuals making decisions for themselves about the risk that they're willing to take or not to take, that's unacceptable. Then it's the job of government 
to make sure that it's 100% safe. Because why? Because their activities are not important. In a sense, their activities are fundamentally immoral because they're, they're just pursuing their own values. They're being selfish. They're being self-interested in pursuing their own values, in wanting to go into space, in doing it for the fun and the enjoyment of it. There's no common good here. And it's the job of the government to protect us, to protect even people who know, to protect even knowledgeable people, even people who can make assessment of risk for themselves. To hell with all that. We, the central planners, we, the philosopher kings, will decide for you what is the appropriate risk level you take. So one reason the space travel relatively safe is because the entrepreneurs themselves are flying. The pilots are flying. Pilots, very knowledgeable people, know a lot about the technology, know a lot about these aircrafts, these rockets. They don't want to die. Maybe they push pressure on the, on the company to make it safe. What else? Well, most of these companies don't want to kill their customers. Don't want to kill their pilots. Most of the people working in these projects have a sense of pride about them. Now, there are going to be some charlatans, and we'll get to charlatans and how to deal with charlatans afterwards. But fundamentally, most people out there don't want to build buildings that collapse. They don't want to build cars that blow up. They don't want to build spacecraft that implode. They have pride in what they do. They have pride in what they create. Now, they all know, and this is really important, they all know there's risk. We all know there's risk. I'll get to other factors. Don't worry. We're just going through these. We're not going through all of them. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it, but but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing. Whether you're looking at this, uh, and and you know the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.